So what we're looking at now um, is going to be the regulation of how an enzyme works um, and some factors that can potentially speed up how the enzyme does its job or slow it down uh, to regulate the activity within the cell. First thing we're going to talk about uh, are other binding sites. So we have primary binding sites within the cell, uh, or yeah, sorry, within the enzyme um, for the substrate to attach to. We call those the active sites. So the active site's where the reaction's actually taking place. Now, enzymes can also have additional binding sites, like this, in a different location. These are called allosteric sites. Now, in an allosteric site, there's no chemical reactions taking place. Right? Allosteric sites are purely regulatory sites. What that means is that something that attaches to the allosteric site is then going to cause a change in shape of the enzyme, and that change is going to directly affect the shape and or other qualities of the active site. So the allosteric site will affect the active site, okay? so where the reaction is taking place. There are different ways in which the allosteric site can do that. There are what we call allosteric activators and allosteric inhibitors. So come back into the to the graph here um, that we looked at before. So for a typical reaction, what we might see is be a curve something like this. So this is just the straight enzyme and how it behaves um, on its own. What can happen though is if we were to add an allosteric activator first off we could potentially change this curve to look more like this with an activator we've now decreased the km so an activator decreases the Km value. If you remember, the Km, a small Km value is good. A small Km, Km value means the enzyme interacts with the substrate even when there are very few substrates around. So it's, it's really quick in order to bind together. We can also see a circumstance where we see something like this, a different curve. This is with an inhibitor. So now when this allosteric molecule, the molecule binding to the site isn't called an allosteric inhibitor, what will happen is it will change the shape of the enzyme in a way that instead of helping the enzyme bind to the substrate, it almost shuts down the active site itself. So it's like if the, as if the active site has been blocked, right? Because the shape has been changed and this molecule is called an inhibitor. Typically, allosteric activators and inhibitors also bind with temporary hydrogen bonds. So they bind to the site, they are then released from the site, and then the enzyme goes back to, to just the way it was, was before without their, their presence. So these would be molecules that would be triggered by other processes in the cell. Um, if the cell needed to speed up metabolism in a particular way or create more of a particular molecule, it might speed up the work of a particular enzyme. If the products being formed aren't being used because something else has happened in the cell, then an enzyme might get feedback um, to slow down, stop working. Right? We, don't, we don't need as much product. So allosteric sites on enzymes are sensitive to the concentration of other molecules in the cell. And so they can then be again, essentially turned on or turned off uh, based on those concentrations. All right, so that's kind of, that's, a, that's the idea of the allosteric site and allosteric regulation. We also see, so I'm gonna take that just guy out of here. I'm just gonna modify this slightly to look at something else. Now, uh, coming back to this active site, 
Um, we can also see another type, and this is not for activation, this is sort of inhibition uh, only. But, so we still have the active site uh, here. We can also see, also see something called, as we talk about in inhibitors, competitive inhibition. Competitive. So allosteric uh, is what we consider non-competitive. It's non-competitive because it doesn't compete for the active site. It has its own separate binding site. A competitive inhibitor competes with the substrate. So that means there's a substrate molecule that could bind into this active site, but there's also uh, a, another molecule that may look, you know, a bit like it, but slightly different, and this is the inhibitor molecule. And what the inhibitor has are certain properties that are very similar to the substrate. The inhibitor may be of a similar size and shape. It may have a similar charge. It's not going to be the same molecule, but it will be a similar molecule to the actual substrate. Similar enough that even though the enzyme is highly specific, it's close enough to fool the, en the enzyme into thinking that this is the substrate. Sometimes it's because uh, maybe say, you know, this, this part here is actually exactly the same, and this part is the part that's different. So it does have recognition of binding, but yet it can't complete the reaction because the whole, the whole molecule is, isn't the correct molecule. That's the idea. Now, what a competitor, competitive inhibitor would do is we would see a change in... Uh, I'll try to get the last color I have up here. Um, a change in this curve that would look even a little bit different than these. Um, and with a competitive inhibitor, we would see something that looks like this. So this would be the competitive. Inhibitor, and this is the allosteric. Inhibitor, and you can see the difference, you know, between the two um, with the allosteric inhibitor here, you can see it. The cam is going to change. Um, but also what you're gonna see here is the, the overall Vmax has changed. So the Vmax has been dropped down. All right, so here's our Vmax. Now it's lowered because let's say there were 10, I'm just making this up, 10 individual copies of the same enzyme in the cell. When the allosteric inhibitor was introduced, uh, it would potentially shut down a few of them, depending on the concentration of the inhibitor. Uh, so some of them would be working, but the others actually just completely turned off. So it doesn't matter how much substrate you add, you have essentially like fewer enzymes uh, in the cell. So you're never going to get to the same speed again, no matter how much substrate's there. In contrast with competitive inhibition, because the competitor is trying to get to the exact same site as the substrate, this one is concentration dependent. So essentially the idea is you can out, um, you can dilute out the inhibitor by adding more substrate. So if there's more substrate and more substrate and more substrate, um, I'll give you the idea here, um, eventually it'll seem as if there's no inhibitor present and you'll be able to go with the exact same Vmax. Now it will take a lot more substrate molecules to get to the same speed, but it'd be possible. So the example is this, let's say here's, here's again, here's our enzyme. That's the enzyme. And let's just say these uh, yellow ones just are going to represent the inhibitors. And these pink ones are going to represent the substrate molecules. Okay, So if we have somewhat equal numbers of substrates and inhibitors, there's sort of an equal chance that it might bind to either one. If it binds to the substrate, the reaction happens. If it binds to the inhibitor, nothing happens temporarily, it's temporary, and then it will leave the site and then it can try again, the enzyme will try again, and it'll bind to a molecule, and it could be the substrate and then it works, or it could be another inhibitor, 
and then nothing happens again. So it really all depends. If we keep adding substrate molecules, though, to this solution, right, the substrate concentration is increasing here, what's going to happen is now it'll become more likely the enzyme will encounter the substrate. So the reaction rate will seem to go a little faster. And if we keep adding more and more and more, and we kind of flood them with substrate molecules like this, then eventually it's pretty much going to bind to a substrate reaction. Substrate reaction, substrate reaction. Very rarely will an inhibitor molecule ever come in, so the rate will get back up to where it has before. So you can look at a curve like this, or I could essentially give you uh, two curves, uh, maybe three. Maybe I say one of them is the enzyme with no inhibitor. Uh, and then these are two other um, curves resulting from the presence of an inhibitor. And I'm not telling you which one. And then I would ask you to tell me by labeling them, which inhibitor does each line represent? And you should be able to explain that. And it should be fairly obvious that the allosteric one never gets up to the same Vmax. The competitive one would reach the same Vmax. Um, it just takes a lot longer to get there, essentially. That, that would be a, that's the main idea. So this is um, just the, the basic concept. We'll talk about um, some specific reactions and examples of certain molecules that can act as inhibitors, both competitive or allosteric inhibitors. But um, this is the, the terminology and how it kind of feeds into looking at this graph of rate of reaction versus substrate concentration. And so again, you should be able to read this graph, label the Vmax and KMs, uh, and be able to now add on to it by putting these terms into it. Last thing we're going to do is then talk about other things that affect how the enzyme works, um, which is going to be temperature and pH. And then uh, we'll close out with uh, basic uh, enzyme uh, properties and then start to move into metabolic reactions.